if there is a difference in the aquatic therapy versus the physical therapy together or separate? There are numerous studies um, that have been done on base up uh, arthritis, mm-hmm. joint replacements. There's just so many gait and balance um, and so many studies with positive mm-hmm. outcomes. Aquatic therapy can be as beneficial or more beneficial in certain circumstances. But the studies definitely back up the fact that aquatic therapy is, um, you know, it works. Basically, yeah. it just simply works and it works in a way that truly benefits the patient. And Anybody that's interested can just Google, you know, mm-hmm. the studies, and, and they would find that there are so many of them. And we do have a listing of some links on our website um, for peak performance. Right. We have some, you know, some of the information is on our links. So we do have, you know, a lot of information about our whole facility and aquatic therapy and other therapies that we offer because we specialize in numerous therapies. Because I can imagine even with chronic illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis yes. and the different uh, arthritis that chronic illnesses that involve the joints and or muscles. Um, patients can benefit Absolutely. on an ongoing basis from this aquatic therapy. Yeah. What happens with patients who have a fear of water? I have many of them. Do you? So many. I had, again, I had one yesterday, and I have to say that most of my patients end up absolutely loving it, mm. and we just go very slow and, and carefully and never push someone beyond what they're comfortable with, and they... I, you know, they, they, once they get in and they start experiencing it and realizing, you know, we'll adjust the pace to what they can handle. Um, sometimes we go in with them if they really need it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if we have a patient like, a say, a stroke victim that isn't able to do things on their own, then we would go in the pool with them. But for the most part, most people are learn how to do it. And, you know, we can hold on to the sides. The treadmill has rails. So it, it it really is a safe environment. We have steps in there that we exercise on. So, so I'm visualizing the treadmill is in the water. It's in the, it's in the water. And then, then there's rails there, and the rails are removable for a higher level patient. Um, so we get, you know, we, we, we work with the um, various sports teams in the area. We actually rehab for NASA Community College, um, mm-hmm. you know, athletes. We have a lot of athletes, so we can go from such a high level to somebody that, like I said earlier, is 87 years old right. and is having trouble walking right. and is afraid of falling, and we can just tailor the exercises and to the very needs of the patient okay. and have extremely high level aggressive or we can have very low level and what's appropriate for that patient. What do patients wear in the in the, the aquatic tanks? Well, we prefer Almost. a bathing suit, but nowadays there's so many options for um, bathing suits because they now make bathing suit clothing. So there's for the, for the most modest person or someone who's uncomfortable in a regular bathing suit, there is a company called In the Swim, and there's other, just in regular stores now, there's like bathing suit clothing. So basically anybody can get in. And um, So they are required to purchase this before they go? Um, they they, they just, wear their own. They just wear yeah, their own. Yeah, wear their own, and um, we certainly, we don't want, you know. Mm-hmm. And honestly, in some cases, I've had people come in with like, you know, just work shorts, workout shorts mm-hmm. and T-shirts if they really are uncomfortable. But the bathing suit clothing nowadays makes it such an easy option yeah. that that really is our preferable form. You know, a bathing suit is great, but, you know, there are, I have they have pants, they have shirts, so it's it's very easy. That sounds very interesting. So with this type of therapy, what is the age range you'll take from how young? I think our youngest child that I can remember was a, probably around six. Okay. Um, and as long as they are safe mm-hmm. in the water and their parents are good with it, sometimes we go in with the child, sometimes we don't have to. Um, and it, again, it all depends on the needs of the child, but safety is always the priority. So, you know, if they can swim or if they can stand, because we have lower, uh, it's not a deep pool. It, the, at the deepest portion, it's, um, you know, only four feet. Oh, and, okay. and I, um, you know, it's like four and change, but it's not higher than five ever. Okay. And sometimes the water level changes slightly by an inch or so, um, depending on how high we fill it. But basically, it's not over five feet. 
And then we have another section of it where there's a step that's a little shallower. Mm -hmm. And then we also have steps that people can stand on like children if they're too short but still will benefit. I had a child that came in with so much pain. Mm -hmm. And children today, they do a lot of bending. They're watching TV. They're on their devices. And we see a lot of neck and postural issues that... You know, kids come in and and in the pool, you can look straight down at everybody and like you get you can assess them from every angle. So you can really work on so many things and draw their attention to the quality of their posture, the Mm -hmm. quality of their movements. And it's very easy for us to see anything that's off alignment and just say, you know, okay, now try relax your shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, your right shoulder's higher than your left, Mm -hmm. you know, and just like, let's just try and work on that. And it's really, really an effective way because people can then connect with it. Yes. And they really get it. They Mm -hmm. understand. They can, they can really understand what it is that you're seeing. And sometimes, you know, I ask permission and I'll just take a little, you know, a little uh, video of them and then show them themselves and they're amazed, like, mm-hmm. oh, that's what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Okay, now I get it. And they're able so to So the therapist it. is actually um, on, alongside the pool just sitting and observing as the patient goes through range of motion and types of exercises to right. see how they're doing and making sure they're going through it properly. Right. Well, we're, yeah, we're absolutely directing them in how to do it. Um, it is more of a one-on-one therapy. I mean, we have two people in the pool at once at the most, Um and it's very one-on-one in the mm-hmm. pool atmosphere. Some some places have larger pools. I mean, aquatic therapy exists in various forms. In our facility, it is definitely more of a, a one-on-one or two-on-one type of experience, so they get very personalized care. That's great. And this personalized care makes it uh, very good for the individual to see their progress on an ongoing basis. Absolutely. And I think that's key. You're listening to Your Family's Health on the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. And today our guest is Monica Otto. We'll be right back. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. Welcome back to Your Family's Health, voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. And I'm Dr. Janine Gerard, and I'm talking to Monica Otto about aquatic therapy. So, Monica, this is really, for me, it's, you know, as a nurse practitioner, this is something that really is supportive for patients, and it is restorative for patients who are looking to improve their gait, improve their ability to move their joints. So it, it has multiple benefits with this. So is this covered by, generally covered by insurance, so patients can know that they are covered pretty much with most insurances for this right. particular. That is a, a great question. And part of that goes back to even the scientific research. If it wasn't an evidence-based practice, you know, where there is scientific evidence backing it, insurance would never pay for it. And basically, insurances do pay for it. Now, there's every insurance is slightly different. Mm-hmm. And you have to, look, you know, talk to your you know, company and see if they cover aquatic therapy. But most do. Medicare absolutely does. And um, many insurances do. Um, there are some variations on that, but we always work with you. We also do have self-pay as an option for certain patients that want it, um, and we have both, quite honestly. But, um, you know, it, it really is something that is so beneficial that doctors and insurances are well aware of it and definitely support it. We just have to be careful of, you know, not overdoing. Like, you know, we want to make sure that we're integrating land as well as pool when we start out. Some people love the pool so much they never want to get out. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of have to say, well, it's time to introduce some land therapy because you need it. You're not a fish. Yeah. You don't live in the water. <laughs> but, you know, uh, 
all according to the patient. Mm -hmm. And we also train people to do it on their own so mm -hmm. that they can leave our facility. They don't have to be with us for the rest of their lives. We don't want that. We want them functioning, returning back to their lives. And if they need tune-ups or they just need to do it as part of their you know weekly regimen of exercise, we have a lot of spinal stenosis patients, for example, that are going to have stenosis for the rest of their lives. It's not going to change. Or like you said, rheumatoid arthritis, where if we can train you how to do these exercises, you can take those exercises and utilize them in a, in a pool setting in a more public environment and pay less money. And now you can take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's about is training people to help themselves and get better and then be able to maintain that on their own. Now tell me, how does it work for a patient who may have an infection? I'm thinking uh, if a patient comes in and they may have maybe a wound or something like mm -hmm. that, would they be exempt from the therapy going into the pool? Quite honestly, it would depend on the what the wound is in and what the doctor says. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, yes, that mm -hmm. would be something that we're not going to put an open wound mm -hmm. in the pool. Mm -hmm. But we do have bandages that are called occlusive bandages. Okay. And you can put that over certain types of you know openings that blocks the water from entering. So it really would be the analysis of the doctor, of the physical therapist and the aquatic therapist at that time and having a communication and seeing if the benefits outweigh the risks. Is it safe for the patient? Is it safe for the pool, the quality, keeping the water clean? Yeah. So, But for the most part, open wounds, you know, people with open wounds are not going to be not, going in. And the other thing is incontinence for obvious reasons, um, you know. But we do have people that have issues, but if they're able to... Um, hold, you know, for right. a certain amount of time, then, you know, they're, they're, they they can go in, but they have to be able to have some control. Right. And I mean, I think that's an obvious mm -hmm. one, but we do get that as a question. And so the cleaning of the pool, that's that happens on a daily basis where you completely empty the pool. How does that work? With that it? would definitely not happen daily in mm -hmm. our Lindbrook office okay. because it's a big pool. Okay. However, I personally clean the pool and I do it every four to six weeks where I empty out the water, but the water is closely monitored and the chemicals are take you know the um, three times a day we take the, the levels and we're um, you know I'm always assessing and we're making sure everything is clean and you know above above standard yeah. levels quite honestly meticulous about the cleanliness of the pool mm -hmm. and um, and then uh, really we're not even supposed to change it as often as we do I personally do because we have a high volume load sure. and I want to make sure it's clean so we you know changing the filters regularly and um, emptying the pool, cleaning it out, and then refilling it again with fresh water, which, again, I do every four to six weeks. So how, how many years have you been working as a therapist? I've been working uh, for five years. Five years. Yeah. And before that, did you do physical therapy? I or? did not. No, okay. I came into this late in life. Um, and before that, I worked with children. Yeah. I taught children for years when, I guess, the passion. But I always loved um I did a lot of studying and a lot of research when I was younger, so I really grew up with a love of health care and helping people. So, Well, this has been very informative, um, and really I've learned a lot about aquatic therapy, and, and certainly we can uh, think of how this can benefit majority of our patients. Absolutely. So thank you. Um, for coming in and talking to us, Monica Otto, and for talking to us about aquatic therapy. And thank you, listening audience, for joining in and tuning in, and hopefully you can benefit from this session. This is Your Family's Health 90.3 WHPC.